What's up, Tyler? How's it going, man? We live? It's, it's We are live. I am snowed in today um, in a hotel room. It is winter storms in the south, my man. <laughs> Good, man. I'm glad uh, you getting snowed in. You can still get on the call. And we can discuss our the daycare that we're underwriting today. Had fun today researching yeah, the learning experience. I'm actually really excited about this, as I, as I told you via text. Um, I did not spend as much time on this as I, I would have liked prior to this call, but uh, I do plan on doing a deep dive. As I mentioned, we're doing a concept now um, that is private equity backed. I, I won't disclose the name right now, but um, <clears throat> and I feel like this asset class is the closest one to what we are currently developing. Right. And so, um, yeah, you know, we did look into the daycare industry. Uh, it is not a daycare what we're developing, but um, but did do some studying on the, the, the daycare industry and its cap rates prior to taking that on. And and uh, anyway, I'm talking too much. I'll let you uh, let you run with it. Great, man. Um, let me share my screen here real quick. Can you just let that uh... let me add you? Accept that screen. Okay, so this is the company, um, you know, that's going to be paying the rent on this asset, the learning experience. This is a this is a daycare. There's zero to six babies up to six years old. They've got three hundred and something locations. Uh, another two hundred and fifty, two hundred and fifty ish, I believe, under development. So they're growing extremely rapidly. Um, one of the already one of the biggest uh, daycare franchises in the U.S. I think they're like sixth or seventh. Um, Super interesting, a lot of cool concepts, um, and definitely really fast growth. This one in particular is in the place that we know best, just outside of Nashville, Tennessee. Um, Winston's hometown just up here. You can find Winston's house here, just up a little bit north where this daycare is. So, um, you know, we've looked around this area a lot. This is this one's in Spring Hill. So if you zoom in, Spring Hill's just outside of, of Nashville, it's uh, in the Nashville MSA. Um, it's it's a nicer area, wealthier area. This one's particular. This one is in a residential area. Um, this daycare is actually being finished right now. So if you're in Google Maps, Google Maps, as you know, probably knows, um, usually a bit behind. So it doesn't have the construction here, but it's going to be right here in this residential area, which is also an area um, right next to this elementary school. And right in the middle of Spring Hill, Tennessee, which, uh, you know, is a great area demographically. Um, Winston, I don't know, do you want me to uh, throw up a tableau map just to kind of, and uh, show how, how the demographics look for Spring Hill real quick? Yeah, sure. And while you're doing that, I'll talk about it a little bit. Um, so we have a project going in Spring Hill right now. I was just looking at that about two and a half miles up the road <clears throat> from here. So. Spring Hill is a great, um, it's a great submarket of Nashville. It has grown rapidly. A lot of new construction still going on. You, you kind of have the Spring Hill and Columbia uh, duo just uh, south of Nashville. So a lot of folks live in Spring Hill and or Columbia um, and, and um, you know, commute to Nashville for work. But you also have, you know, Spring Hill is unique. Uh, it's kind of cut into half but you have williamson county which is really known to have great schools and so you've got a lot of families that really uh are able to to kind of get the williamson county public schools um <clears throat> by being in spring hill uh and and not in the more expensive areas like franklin etc so uh great market i think spring hill has a very bright future uh so much so you know we're, we're developing a project uh, in Spring Hill, as I mentioned. So very, very good future, uh, excuse me, very good market for, for, for long-term investment, in my opinion. So what do you got, Tyler? Yeah, great. And just, I'll just whip this up here real quick. So this is, um, you know, we do a lot of work in the Nashville area. So this is a, this is just a tableau map. Basically what we're doing here is overlaying some demographics with other local businesses. Um, so for this one in particular, where this is a daycare, so, you know, some relevant local business businesses would be like, where are other daycares, where are elementary schools, um, and things like that. And then we'd also want to overlay that with some demographics. So in this case, I'm looking at the Nashville area here, 
and I'm looking at medium household income by zip code. So I can go over here and I can play and I can, you know, only look for, you know, maybe areas with higher income. And you can start to see some of these zip codes fall off. I go to 50, 60,000. Um, some of the more ones fall off. If I zoom in here on Spring Hill, you know, you can see they're still in there in these higher levels. This is 75,000 average income. Uh, this one's 120,000, 86,000, 86,000, 103,000. So this whole Spring Hill area is actually a pretty wealthy area. Um, and if you overlay that with, you know, daycares, which are going to show up here in red and schools, uh, which are going to show up in yellow, you can see basically um, this is a very, and there are other demographics we use to look at this, but just quickly for now, this is a very uh, family oriented neighborhood. And we've specifically looked at this on, you know, percentage of population by age. And we know that Spring Hill is a great area for daycares, for schools. And that's probably, you know, that's why there's already a lot of competition there. Um, and then this daycare in specifically has found some white space. I believe this daycare is right here next to Prescott. Yes. Allendale elementary school. So, uh, this daycare will be located next to another daycare and next to this elementary school right here. So they found a bit of white space in a crowded area. As you see up here, there's a lot more competition among daycares in this section of Spring Hill. And then down here is where this, this one's going to go. So. Just a quick, you know, quick, quick look at some of the stuff that we do when we're analyzing markets, um, some of the tools that we use before we actually get into the financials of this. Excellent. So speaking of financials, um, as we said, this is a learning experience. Uh, who will be the tenant? This is a brand new lease. Hasn't even started yet. It starts in July. Um, they're just finishing up the school now. 15-year lease with two five-year options on the end. Um, and they're asking a 6.4 cap for this school, right? So it's doing 365,000 a year in NOI, and they're asking 5.7 million. Um, a couple things to keep in mind on this. One, it's not a triple net lease. So the landlord is responsible for roof and structure. So this being a 10,000 square foot building, that's, that's a lot of roof and a lot of structure. Um, so you're going to have to put some money away uh, in reserve each year to make sure that you can, you know, Brand new building, you're probably not going to have to pay much, you know, in the next few years. But that reserve does have to be in place so that you're, you know, you're you're not over calculating how much money you're making each year, and then all of a sudden, bang, you get hit with a, a massive bill you can't pay. Um, Winston, you want to talk any bit about these double net triple net leases? Well, just remember <clears throat> that a lot of times, the uh, you know, a lot of people balk at at having responsibility for the roof as a landlord, uh, which yeah, it is a pain. So, or it could be a pain, but you do have a roof warranty, right? A lot of times those roof warranties can be you know, 15, 20, 25 years, um, and you can pay to have them longer, right? So um, so long as you do not allow any contractors up there uh, to damage the roof, um, you know, you, you, you really don't have that big of a risk because you do have the roof warranty, right? So um, I just I just think it's important to add that. You know, a lot of landlords, they get upset because, you know, it's not the full absolute triple net. But when you have uh, the double net, you know, where the landlord's responsible for the roof, you can get a little bit more of a premium. And so, you know, yes, you have more responsibility. If there's a, an issue with the roof, you may get a call, but you're able to, to really capitalize on that and increase your cash flow. Um, or you should be versus an absolute triple net lease, right? So, you know, if this was an absolute triple net lease, you know, maybe it's trading at a six and a quarter or a six, right? Probably not a six, but six and a 15, six and a quarter. So you get a little bit um, of a premium for that risk. Yeah, great point. Um, the other thing that's interesting about this, the other thing that's interesting about this lease that isn't typical uh, the guarantee is a burn-off guarantee. So a burn-off guarantee is when the, the tenant is guaranteeing something up front, but then over time, that guarantee gets smaller and smaller. So in the case of this one, uh, the learning experience is guaranteeing 800000 up front. And then each year for the, for the first eight years, that'll go down by 100 k So then after eight years, there's no more guarantee on the lease. 
So that's a different type of guarantee than you know you typically seeing with these um, large tenants or corporate guarantees um, that we can compare directly to corporate bonds or or we can compare these private companies directly to public companies that are that have corporate rated bonds. Um, in this case, we can't really we can't do that as well. Um, it's 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 significantly more difficult to discount the cash flows in the same way in the same way that you would say a corporate bond or or a corporate backed uh, guarantee. So that's another reason that that cap rate that six point four cap might be a little bit higher than let's say an equivalent business that gives you a full uh, corporate or large tenant guarantee. Yeah. Let me strip this open here real quick. So acquisition cash flows, operating cash flows. Um, this this one actually has pretty good rent bumps. It's 12% every five years. So you know, you're starting off at 365,000 base rent. You've got some capital reserve. I put 20,000 a year down here. This is a 10,000 square foot building. Winston, you think that's that's high or low? Uh, I think that's good. I think it's a little high, but um, you know what we would do we didn't have time to do it, but what we would do is get quotes on what it would cost to, to kind of replace the roof uh, and or anything that we have um, that we have responsibility for and kind of um, go off that. But I think 20,000, I think it's a little high per year. Um, I'll maybe change that to you know, 15 or so. Um, what percentage will that 20? Was 365 do you remember like, well seven well what 18 18 two would be five percent right yeah yeah i think that's good yeah 15 i think is good per year yeah and and just for and just for reference these rent bumps are pretty good um on most of these leases the rent bumps last week we did a lease where there weren't rent bumps so anything looks good at this <laughs> point but uh um Typical rent bumps are are ten percent every five years or two percent a year. Tw this twelve percent every five years is is pretty much in a line with, you know, if you, if you had taken compounding into effect, it's about the same as two percent a year. So it's it's not a bad um, not a bad deal for rent bumps. And then lastly, the disposition. So let's talk about disposition cash flows before we move on to the IRR, right? So I'm assuming two scenarios here. Year fifteen, they've got two options uh, to release. One is they stay. The other one, you have to do an adaptive reuse. Um, if they stay, the rent at that time is going to be 510000 a year. I'm not moving the, the cap rate that, that much. I'm actually using the same cap rate. Um, I guess I guess my, my logic for that is, yes, it's an older building. Yes, the cap rates in older buildings tend to be uh, higher than the cap rates in newer buildings. But at the same time, the sector is growing rapidly, and this building is located in one of the you know one of the best areas in the country, um, in an, a wealthy Nashville suburb that's doing nothing but growing in population for the next has been doing nothing but growing and is going to continue to grow. So I'm not you know I don't think we really need to move that cap rate around that much. There's there's forces in both directions. The older building should indicate a higher cap rate, but the the geography. And the sector, which is daycares, is growing very quickly. So that that would indicate a lower cap rate. So you, you know, you add those two together, and and at least for me, I I don't believe we need to underwrite the exit cap rate at anything different than the than the enter entering cap rate. I don't know if you have a different opinion on that, Winston. You know, <clears throat> it's a tough one. Uh, I don't really. I'm not going to push back a lot on this one. No one has a crystal ball into the future, so it's really tough to know what the cap rate may be at this position you know, in seven, eight, 15 years, right? So um, I think leaving it there is a little bit too risky. Um, I would aggressive. probably go, somewhere. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's a little aggressive on the sale. You got an older building, um, you've, you've got, <clears throat> You've got a tenant, you know, the benefit of having an older lease term is they've been there, they've been successful, right? But they don't always renew. So um, you're going to have some change in the, in the in the cap rate, in my opinion. So I, I would probably try that at, you know, a six, nine or seven cap. But again, no okay. one knows. I'm conservative, right? So let's be more conservative. 
So we'll do six, let's do six nine on the on the tenant renews and and we sell, and then on the adaptive reuse we'll have a new lease in place and a hundred dollars and a million dollar uh, uh, renovation. We'll keep that one at six four. Okay. All right. So basically, our uh, you know if you go down the weighted average of those two, if you do ninety percent renews, ten percent adaptive reuse, the weighted average is we're going to exit. Uh, net sales reversion after, you know, fees and everything else of about uh, 7 million bucks. Okay. Yeah. So, so if we look at that from an IRR perspective, right. So here's our leveraged cash flows. This is, you know, it's kind of a typical structure. Let's actually just start with zero. So let's say we didn't have a loan. So unlevered IRR, right. 7.48% unlevered IRR. Um, you've got positive cash flows every year. You know, these are uh, in that 300, they start off in that, that 350,000 range and they go up by 12% at the five year bump. So you can see that it's uh, thicker there. Um, you know, if we were to put a loan on it, let's say we did 50% at a 6.5% uh, loan rate, um, that gets our levered IRR ju up just over 8%. So we do have positive leverage on this. It's not you know massively positive, but it's positive enough that you could customize this deal um, to the amount of money that you have available up to the maximum LTV that you could get right. So you could do thirty percent, fifty percent. You know, if, if the bank will let you do seventy percent, all of those are going to give you positive leverage in this case. Which you know, in this environment with six six and a half percent mortgages is um, actually are pretty tough to come by. So in that sense, this deal um, is good for people who are going to take a loan out. Yeah, and look, um, you know, the word on the street, as I say, is the Fed will hike another 25 basis points, um, you know, in Q1 of this year. So who, who knows? But, um, you know, the interest rates are, are, are constantly in flux right now. So, you know, let me open that up again. So 8% IRR, is that good? Is that bad? Um, is this 6-4 cap rate good? Is it bad? You know, We've done, let's pull this out. I like to do this a lot. Uh, you know, this is not a machine learning model or like a serious regression analysis where we take all of the data and we, you know, estimate a good cap rate for this. This is simply just closing cap rate versus remaining term for daycares, childcare services, schools in the last six months. You know, where have they closed? It's just straight sales comparables. Um, and mm -hmm. this one, you know, is that orange dot above the line. Right. So it is significantly cheaper than most daycares and schools that, you know, these single tenant net lease daycare school type assets have been closing in the last six months. Um, I should say that the learning experience, there's two, there's two comps that I found in the data. They closed at a six two five and a six five. Um, so they're very much in a line with what they're asking on this one. And this line is also being dragged down by one. Uh, what's the name? We were talking about this other Winston. Uh, the name of this. Yeah, cadence. What is it? Cadence? Cadence. Right. Cadence. Cadence Academy. Um, all of those dots along the bottom, those are Cadence Academies. They're five caps. <laughs> so they dra they're dragging this average down quite a bit. If you look at everyone who isn't Cadence Academy, and they have, they have 1,500 schools. They're massive. Um, they probably have better guarantees. If you look at everybody else uh, on this map, you know, they're significantly higher. Um, but even so, you know, this learning experience is above the line, which means that the cap rate they're asking is, you know, it is a cheaper deal than the average for, you know, the, the average that's been selling in the market the last six months. So, you know, not even not thinking about the discount of cash flow or anything, but just looking at comparable sales, it seems like it's it's a reasonable deal for the market. Yeah, I, I think that's a good illustration, Tyler, of what's what's going on. I mean, the average is being brought down by cadence, but look, you've got kind of a different um, gar guarantee structure, right? So that's a you know it's a change. Naturally, investors are going to be like, mm, well, you know, it's different. <clears throat> um, and then you have the changing. Um, you know, the changing interest rate environment. So I believe that I think I personally think that the next few months we're going to see 
what we underwrite start to be higher than the last three to six months of comps that we're that we're looking at if if we do not see that i would be shocked um mm -hmm. yeah that's, that's my as we do this i think that we're going to see it start to be, be on the high end um but but that may change that may not be the case so i mean do you buy this do you buy this daycare winston do you want to you know buy you gonna send your kids there well, I don't have any kids yet, but, um, you know, if I did, you know, I, I think, look, I'm a fan of Spring Hill. <clears throat> I think that Spring Hill as a market is very attractive. I don't love the location of this particular business. I mean, it is kind of in the neighborhood. Um, it's not retail focused. You know, I have a more of an, uh, I don't know, a, affection, if you will, of of more retail focused properties, but it is in a great market. You know, childcare is a need. I think it's only going to increase over time. That's my personal belief. So I think if, you know, if, if we have a client who is into child, uh, child care, they believe in it, um, they have cash that they need to place. I think this is a good purchase. You know, the question comes down is, is it a deal? No, I don't think it's a screaming deal. I don't think you're, you're going to hit a home run off of this. Um, but I would say that about almost anything in this current environment. So if everything was equal, I would say, yeah, I'd say it's in a great market. It's a good concept. I would do a little bit of digging, more digging on the, um, <clears throat> and sign the NDA and, and get some information on the guarantor um, and see if they would provide any sort of site specific financials. But I, I like this. I like this as a deal. Um, the, the negative is the build out if if anything goes wrong. I mean, you're looking at a very large um, you know, build out unless you have the, like the same exact use. Um, but overall, I think you're always going to have an opportunity for child care in Spring Hill, especially in the pocket that they're in. So, yeah, yeah, I think it's a buy. Yeah, I think I agree with you um, for everything that you said, um, you know, looking at it financially, I think the return that you're getting on this is above, you know, the return that you get on most other net lease assets. Um, I think it's great that it's positive leverage, which is very hard to find these days. I think it's great um, that it's priced cheaper than the alternatives, even within, it, you know, this market. Um, as Winston said, and as we've looked at, there are reasons for that. You know, the, the, the lease guarantee isn't great. Um, you know, spring, spring Hill, you know, the adaptive reuse will, will be difficult in case you can't put another school in there if this tenant leaves, but you know, there's risk with anything you buy. Um, and I think the return on this one is reasonable, even at the price they're asking, I think it's a reason for the right investor. It's a reasonable investment. I, I definitely. I definitely could see this working for for someone who's who's interested in uh, this type of investment. So, I, I also would I would call it a it's a it's a lukewarm buy for me, uh, and, and maybe a, a great buy for for the, you know the right investor. Yeah, and let's not forget Tyler that every investor is different. Every everyone has their own preferences, but they also have their own tax situations, right? Um, they may be in a situation a ten thirty one situation where they need to place it. And this, this is a real, this is a legit um, deal. Not a home run, according to our data, but but yeah, well, good. So if anyone's interested in it or Spring Hill, uh, we know Spring Hill pretty well. We've looked at it deeply and uh, we do have a project going on there, but happy to discuss this with anyone. Tyler, do you have anything else? That's it, man. That's it. Well, thanks for doing another week. I'll see you next week, all right? All right, cheers. Cheers, everybody.